bless God for today. The long awaited good one twenty two is finally here and we believe that all God is set to do in our lives in this month and beyond shall be established in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I just want to appreciate our Papa and our Mama in the house. I want to say thank you so much for all you have availed yourself for God to do through you in our lives. Come on, help me celebrate them this morning. Give us a general to the Amen. I also want to appreciate all the um, ministers in the house, the pastors and the deacons. Thank you so much for your work and labor of love in the house of God. And to everyone of you seated this morning, come on, just celebrate yourself this morning. And to Jesus, I want you to clap very well for Jesus. Come on. Amen. You found me too. Alright. Alright, two point four. Press up for it. Amen. Amen. That's why I had to pray this morning. So Father, we thank you, God, for this morning. Thank you, God, for the grace we have received to be in the house this morning. Holy Spirit, this service is yours. Speak to me. Touch everyone this morning. And let your word minister to everyone in the name of Jesus. And let those in need of healing be touched this morning in the name of Jesus. Let this fire you bring in, O God, even in this end time, fall upon us here in the name of Jesus. That we will take this fire beyond the shores of Nigeria, even to the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Come on, jam your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning I stand here as one who has obtained mercy from the Lord and as a brother in Christ, privileged to bring forth God's word to God's people. I did not take this privilege, you know, lightly, and I just trust that the Holy Spirit will have a free course even in this service this morning. Please open up your heart for God is said to do so much even in the lives of the young people and everyone, even in this month of May, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's quickly turn our Bibles to the book of Joel, chapter 2. Joel, chapter 2. Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. It says, And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Verse 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Verse 32. It says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be delivered, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Amen. Amen. So this morning we're going to do a brief background, you know, into you know, some of the things that the Lord said to us, you know, concerning you know the youth and what He's doing, you know, even in this end time. And you know, fresh outpouring, you know, is is about you know, the rise of a generation of young people. You know, or the generation of people you know, who God will pour His Spirit upon, you know, who will carry out God's kingdom agenda, you know, even in these last days. There is something God is doing in these last days, and by the Spirit of God, we have obtained mercy of God, you know, as a people to be a part of that agenda. God is doing something mighty, you know, from the continent of Africa, even in the nation Nigeria, you know, and God has chosen us you know as people who carry out this agenda in the last days and so you know god said he's going to pour out his spirit upon us you know in this season and we will rise like mighty men in the name of jesus Amen. you know this meeting is actually a prophetic meeting and you know prophetic meetings are you know our meetings get towards you know establishing the mind of God for his people. You know, if you look at in the Bible, it says the emergence of the Joshua generation. 
you know, and as we say, fresh outcome. You know, so somebody will want to ask, you know, why the emergence of the Joshua generation? Why fresh outcome? Now, the Joshua generation is a generation, um, or is the victory generation? Is the victory generation? Is a generation of people who, you know, will rise in the strength of God to possess the land that the Lord has given to us. The Lord has given us, you know, the land, and it is time for us to go in and possess the land. You know, and so when God, you know, began teaching us about this, you know, He said that, you know, the same word which we find in um, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, that says, Arise, is the same word that God said to Joshua, you know, when he was trying to go into the land, to possess the land. And he says, Arise, go over in you know, this land and possess it, for I have given you the land. Amen. So God has given us the land. It is time to go in and possess the land in Jesus' mighty name. We do not need to be you know, scared about it. And if you look through Joshua chapter 1, you know, God said to Joshua, Fear not, for I will be with thee. You know, I will not fail thee. Be thou strong and courageous, for thou shalt indeed. Divide this land for an inheritance unto the people. You know, so that is the mind of God you know, for us in this season. And God said, The church is marching on, and the gates of hell shall not prevail in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And so, you know, we have established the fact that a you know, fresh outpouring is the rise of a generation filled with the Holy Ghost and equipped. You know, to carry out God's kingdom agenda in the last days. In the Bible says, it's not by power, it's not by might, but by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Let's also see the scripture also in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Verse 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2, it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3, it says, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each and every one of them. Verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. It says, and began to speak with other tongues, you know, as the Spirit gave them motions. Verse 5. It says, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Let's go to verse 12. It says, and they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Verse 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Verse 15. It says, For these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Let's all read verse 16 together. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Amen. So what we read in Joel chapter 2, you know, it was actually fulfilled in Acts chapter 2, you know, on the day of Pentecost, which signifies the beginning, you know, of the Pentecostal movement, what we call the Pentecostal movement, or the apostolic movement. You know, so God said to us that you know this program will bend that move again. Amen. Amen. The prophetic, you know, the apostolic movement will be better again in this environment, Amen. and not just in this area. You know, but will take it you know to everywhere across Nigeria and even to the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. Verse seventeen says, and this shall come to pass in the last days. See, God, I will pour out of my spirit the of flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. 18 and on my servants and all my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Verse 21. 
and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. So the whole agenda of you know the last days is actually the salvation of men. It's actually taking the gospel of Jesus to every man. That's why it says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the outpouring, you know, is not just for us to just receive the Holy Ghost, you know, and just keep it to ourselves. No, it's actually given to us, you know, as an equipment to enable us to carry out the gospel to the nations of the world. Amen. Amen. And so that's why it says, you know, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, you know, if you go down, you know, to verse 22, we discover that after this encounter, Peter stood up and began to admonish the people, you know, about the gospel of Jesus. And the Bible says that that same day, 3,000 people gave their life to Christ. Amen. 3,000 men gave their life to Christ. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was poured out upon the apostles. And they did so many mighty works, you know, which will be seen, you know, this morning. And, you know, as we align ourselves, you know, God is set to do that even with us in this season in the name of Jesus. And so it's actually about God's kingdom agenda. It's really not about us. It is not just, you know, for us to, you know, um, get everything we need to get. No, it's actually in line with what God is set to do in this last days. And we are not, you know, ignorant of that. And God has set us, you know, as pioneers of that move. We are going to be, you know, pioneers of that move even in this last days. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at, you know, Hebrews chapter 11. You know, we're reading scriptures this morning. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, you know, verse 32. I just want to show us, you know, the generation of men that God is raising in this time. Hebrews chapter 11, you know, it talks about you know, the heroes of faith. You know, verse 32. It says, and what shall I not say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Amen. So he was listing, you know, generals in the kingdom, men who yielded themselves, you know, to the spirit of God and God used them mighty. Would your name also be listed among these people? Or you just sit down, you know, and live, you know, the normal life. And then all you think about, you know, is just uh, let me just, you know, get born again, you know, for the young people get married, get a job, get a house, you know, and just relax. No, that is not the generation of people that God is raising. We're going to see, you know, the things that God used them to do. Proverbs 13, it says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Amen. It says, Who through faith subdued kingdoms? Who wrought righteousness, obtained promises. Stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. It is out of weakness, we are made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. It says, Women received their death, raised to life again. It says, And others were tortured, not accepting you know, deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. So he says, you know, this group of people, you know, who God used, these were the things that God used them to do. So they subdued kingdoms, they wrought righteousness, they obtained promises, they stopped the mouth of lions. These are, you know, if you read, you know, um, the account of these people, they were young people when God, you know, when they encountered God, you know, find those of them in their fences, you know, and others. They were young people, and this was what, you know, God used them to do. How much more would God use us to do in this end time? There is so much, you know, to do in this time. You know, there are nations to take over for Jesus. You know, there are communities to turn, you know, over for Jesus. There are communities in darkness that, you know, when we step into those communities, they will see light. Amen. Amen. So it's not just about us. It is about God's kingdom agenda in these last days. It is about, you know, waking up to responsibility. It is rising up, you know, in faith and saying, I don't want to be a normal Christian. 
I want to be, you know, a Christian, you know, who will actually, you know, do these things in Hebrews chapter 11. When I step into a community, I take the whole community for Jesus. When I step into an atmosphere, you know, people will know that somebody has come. People will feel the impact, you know, that the Holy Ghost has come into this community. These are the generation of men that God is raising at this time. Amen. So, you know, while we sit down, you know, let's begin to align ourselves. You know, and begin to, you know, say, Lord, here I am, find me useful. He says, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. There is no limit. There is no limit to the number of people that the Holy Ghost, you know, want to use in this end time. That is why in Judea, the, the scripture says, God will pour the spirit upon everybody, as many that will avail themselves, the Holy Ghost will come upon them and invade them. Amen. In the Old Testament, you know, the Holy Ghost just came on you know, a few people, you know, and you know, read the so many mighty things that gee, how much more the Holy Ghost living inside of you. Jesus said to his disciples, He says, You shall receive power. He didn't say you shall receive grammar. He says you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So why do we have the Holy Ghost and we just sit down? No, there is power on your inside. There is power on your inside waiting, you know, to be harnessed. There is power on your inside waiting for you to know that this is what you have on the inside. The time is now. We are not waiting for you know two more years. No, the time is now that the Holy Ghost you know, will use us to do mighty works for God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, so let's you know not just sit down and feel cool. You know, let's not just sit down and say, Oh, yes, my life is going fine. No. The gospel that God has not gotten to so many nations on the earth. Even in Nigeria, there are places where the gospel has not gotten to. So why are we sitting down and relaxing? Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. If God should open your eyes, you know, to the, to the things that he has set out for you to achieve, not just in your job, not just in your career, you know, but in his kingdom, I tell you, you'll be amazed. That is why he says, young men shall see visions. What are the visions? It's not, you know, visions of I see, I saw. No, they are prophetic visions. Amen. And you know, you have a form, it says, you know, write the vision down, you know, so that the person that reads it move on. You are not to get a vision and sit down, you know, and just look. No, you don't get a vision, you know, and sit down and look. You get a vision, you know, and then you run with it. Amen. Amen. You get a vision and then you run with it. What is that vision? The vision is our Amen. That's what the vision. Is. So God said to us, He'll be doing three things. Three things, you know, for us in the last days. Number one is that you know He would be raising and sending men into their prophetic destinies. Amen. There's a prophetic destiny are lacking because you know children of God, you know, have not really you know taken possession of this you know space of life. Amen. And so, there are some of us, you know, in this season, God will be sending us into the marketplace. That is your prophetic destiny. God will be sending you, you know, into you know, the academics. You know, there are some of us that will be you know, head of the story of that 10 year old girl. Why? There are those in the accounting sector, there are those who are in. You know, um, the artillery, you know, those that carry you know, the weapons, you know, everybody working together you know, for the common good you know, of the nation. So also, every one of us in our different spheres of life you know, should take the gospel of Jesus to those places. Amen. And so, you know, God will be raising and sending men into their prophetic destinies. For some of us, you know, you would have to go, you know, like I said, to the educational sector. As you are teaching the children, you know, you are impacting them with the word of God. As you are teaching the children, you know, I had a lecturer in those days, you know, before he would lecture us, he would tell us to pray. He would really make a lecture. Amen. So we need those kind of lecturers. Because, you know, while we think that we are sleeping, the enemy is not sleeping. 
The enemy is actually going after the young people, the children. How can a 10 year old girl, you know, I don't want to mention the story, but those of us who heard it, you know, how can a 10 year old girl, you know, be involved in such, you know, an act? And then you say, what is this educational system? What are we doing? There's so much corruption, you know, in the educational system. Where are the children of God that will rise up and people who are those children, you know, that sector? We need lecturers who are God fearing. We need lecturers, you know, who would you know stand to lecture, you know, and as they are lecturing, people are falling under the power of God. As they are lecturing, you know, people are having encounters. Those are the generation of men that God is raising. Amen. Amen. We need people in the political sector. Men, you know, who would give counsel like Daniel. Men who would give wise counsel like Joseph. Pharaoh said to Joseph, he says, as much as the spirit of the holy gods dwell in you, he says, there is none so wise and discreet as thou art. There is so much the Holy Ghost wants to do with us. There is so much the Holy Ghost wants to do with us. I can't even start sharing you know, everything, but you know, we just need to align ourselves. We just need to be in proper alignment. You know, and the Holy Ghost will set us on fire. I will begin to carry out these works in the name of Jesus. You know, so God will be raising, you know, and sending men into their prophetic destinies. Let's look at, you know, Luke chapter 4. We're going to see, you know, the example of Jesus. Luke chapter 4. Let's go to verse 14. Take it from 14 to 18. It says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a faith of him to all the region round about. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, I like the statement of that, as his custom was, amen. It says he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the read. It says, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. That's Isaiah. It says, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written. When he had opened the book, it now says, verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set and liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Since Jesus found in the way it was written in the book. So you need to you know, begin to cultivate the habit of studying God's word. That is where your prophetic destiny is written. You need to begin to study the word of God. It says, as his custom was. So it was a lifestyle for Jesus. It was a lifestyle for Jesus in order to open the book. It was a lifestyle for Jesus to open the book. Amen. It says, and he found the place. Have you found what is written of you? There is something written about you in the word of God. There is something written about you in the word of God. Please do not take you know, the ministry of the word of God for granted. Do not take the ministry of the word of God for granted. You know, in Joshua, you know, God said to Joshua, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. Amen. In verse 7, you know, please can you project that? Let's just look at it quickly. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. Let me just you know, say a few things of them. It says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which who Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right or to the left, that thou mayest prosper with us whoever thou doest. Now, in verse 7 and in verse 8, it talks about the word of God. But there are two you know, dimensions or two aspects of this. Number one, the first one is the word that Moses, my servant, commanded him. He says, according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded him. And in verse 8, he now comes and says, you know, this book of the law again shall not depart out of their mouth. So bringing that home, you know, please, young people, 
don't run away from church. Don't run away from church. I tell you the truth, don't run away from church. Your prophetic destiny, you know, you can catch that rema when you're in church. You can catch that rema when you're in church. And you know, I don't want to go into you know, all of the things that you know we have caught from this place. Amen. You know, but you know, the words you hear from this altar, please take note of every one of them. That's what God was telling Joshua in, in verse 7. It says, All the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. As much as you know you want to study by yourself, there are some things you can never discover unless you are taught by the servant of God. Right. Amen. So please let's not take the ministry of God. Let's come to church and let's come to church early. Let's come to church and let's come to church early. Let's focus on the word of God. When the world is going on, it will take there be no distraction. Young people, don't be distracted when the world is going on. Don't be distracted. Prophetic words, you know, don't always come as, you know, be, 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 does hear the Lord. No. It doesn't always come like that. Sometimes, you know, God someone can be preaching, you know, and then he will just say something. But you, that word is for, you will catch it that you know that is your word. That's right. You're complicated. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. You know, if I, if I say something, I'm going to say, I just want to stop. See, when we got, you know, you know, last year, you know, the way they arise, you know, that you will come up and say, Joshua generation. That you said that almost every Sunday in the month of May last year. I'm like, I just took it, you know, casual and said, okay, Joshua generation. Not until, you know, the Holy Ghost drew my attention, you know, to that word, Joshua generation. I didn't know. So if I was not in service, or if I had skipped church, I would have heard that. Amen. You know, so let's not joke with the ministry of the world. Yes. Prophetic words are flying up and down in this season. Prophetic words are flying up and down. You can just, you know, put someone and just be preaching, and then you just you know, say, so, some of you here, you know, God is opening doors, you know, to the nations of the world for the gospel. You didn't call anybody's name, have you? No. But you, you will know that that is your word. Amen. So let's not joke with the ministry of the word. Let's settle down, you know, with the word. There is nothing, you know, that is greater than studying the word of God. Amen. So, you know, let's study the word. See, Jesus found the place where it was written of him. You need to find the place where it is written of you. Your prophetic destiny is in the word of God. That thing that God wants to do with you in this last days is in the world. Yes. For some of you, you know, it may sound hard. For some of you, your prophetic destiny may be that of Paul. It's not that you will come and give us, you know, new revelations, but the things that Paul suffered, you will suffer it for the sake for the sake of Christ. For some of you, you know, you will be the John the Baptist of our generation. For some of you, you know, you would be, you know, the Catholic co-one of our generation. Amen. Uh -huh. There are some general things I don't want to call now so that, uh, you know, but, you know, God is raising a new generation of mighty men. God is raising a new generation of mighty men. I don't know about you, but me, I want to be a part of that generation. I don't want to be, you know, a normal Christian. You know, in Acts, the Bible says, Philip went to the city of Samaria and took the whole of Samaria for Jesus. Wow. But this was Philip, you know, that was called to serve tables. But he knew that serving tables was not his prophetic destiny. It was only a service in the house of God. Amen. The same Bible says that the people gave heed to Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Please put Acts chapter 8. Let them see. Verse 5. Acts chapter 8, verse 5. Please, are we following this morning? Amen. Now, let's look at it. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and did what? And preached Christ unto them. He didn't go to preach about himself. He didn't go to talk about the things he had achieved. He says he went there to preach what? Christ unto them. Verse 6. He says, And the people 
of Samaria with one accord gave he unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. The gospel is not English. The gospel is power. Amen. Amen. The gospel is power. That's why Jesus said to the disciples, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So why are we sitting down? Why are we sitting down and thinking that, you know, all is well? All is not well. It doesn't have to be about the economy. All is not well. The time is now to take the gospel. All the journey is small. To take the gospel, you know, and clear this community for Jesus and draw men to Jesus. Amen. This is what God wants to do. You know, verse 7 it says, For unclean spirits crying out with loud voice came out of men that were possessed. We had the demon chasers in the house. Unclean spirits, they were crying out. He says, How many taken with palsies and that were lame were healed? We are the people that will come into the community and then you start gathering new chairs. Start gathering, you know, God is why because people have received their healing. We are gay. We are gay. But we sit down and thinking that you know, we have so much time on our hands. There is so much time. Jesus is coming again. The gospel needs to be taken to all the nations of the world. Amen. Verse 8. I like this. I says, and there was great joy in that city. By the coming of one man, there was great joy in that city. Just imagine all of us here going into different cities of the world. The Bible says there was great joy in that city. Amen. Amen. Because of Philip. Because of Philip, there was great joy in that city. Because of Philip, there was great joy in that city. There are cities waiting for you. They will not experience joy if you don't come. They will not experience joy if you don't come. I tell you by the Spirit of God, there are cities waiting for you. If you don't go, they will still be in darkness. That is why I say those that sat in darkness have seen the great light. How could they see the great light if those who are carrying the light don't go to meet them? How will they see the light? All is all well. We need to rise up in faith. We need to be, you know, have our names written as generals in the kingdom, taking the gospel to the nations of the earth. Somebody sang a song, and I like that song. He said, if I die, I die. If I perish, I perish. But Jesus must be seen. Jesus must be seen. We need to make the world see Jesus. Nigeria needs to see Jesus. Africa needs to see Jesus. Old Ojaro needs to see Jesus. The time is now to rise up as men and women who are fearless, who are strong and courageous in the power of his might, not our own power. That's why it says, not by power, not by might, but by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. In this season, you know, God is setting us on fire for him. No more, you know, no more laxity. You know, no more lukewarmness. You know, no more you know, casual Christianity. No. We need to be on fire for Jesus. Anywhere God is sending you to take Jesus to that place. Amen. Amen. I'm also speaking to myself. I need to wake up too. I need to wake up too. There's so many. See, there's so much to do for God. There's so much to do for God. It's not just about obtaining promises. No, there's that part. But there's also power. Somebody say power. Ah! And when Jesus says you shall receive power, what he saying is that power is residing on your inside. That is dynamis to cause an explosion. That is power on your inside. In Ephesians chapter 1, let's go to verse, you know, please don't mind me, you know, we'll just feel like this. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Put verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16. 15, sorry. It says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, I love unto all saints. 16. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. 17. Now the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. 
go to verse 19. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his dunamis? This word power is the same word power in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe? Other translations we say, um, there's a translation that says, that power in you and for you. The greatness of his power in us. So why are we living the power? Unutilized. Why are, we, why are we not using the power? Why are we not using the power? That power is on your inside. The power is on your inside. Great men rise, you know, by the usage of that power that is inside of them. We all have power. There's once you once you are born again and filled with the spirit of God, you have power on your inside. Amen. But the, you know, but the degree to which you see that power at work is the degree to which you believe first in that power and how much you utilize the power. Amen. So of course I carry for, oh, Father, I need more. Mm -hmm. The one inside, use it first. How have you used the one, you know, that God has given to you and are crying out for more? No, God will give you more, you know, when you have used what he has given to you. God has given us power. Amen. So we don't need to sit down, you know, and just, you know, think, no. We need to go and take the gospel to the nations of the earth. We need to go and possess the land. Our Father has given us the land. Amen. Amen. We don't need to sit down and quiet about it. Amen. Amen. And so the second thing God wants to do is that God wants to empower us, you know, with the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. First, God wants to raise men you know, and send them into their prophetic destinies. God is not just sending us, you know, He's sending us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is raising, you know, next you know, generation of you know people who would walk in the healing anointing. People who would walk, you know, in the gifts of miracles, people who would walk in the gifts of faith. People you know, who would walk you know, in the gifts of word of knowledge, all of these things are available to the believer. All of these things are available to the believer. He says the manifestation of the spirit is given to everyone to profit with all. Amen. So why, why are you not using the gifts of the spirit? Why are we not using it? And you know, I said to him, in a group of young people, I said, it's not by age in this Genesis dispensation now. Mm -mm. There are young people, you know, that are laying hands on the sick. There are young people that are raising the dead. There are young people that are casting out devils. Let's not be left behind. Being a general in the kingdom, you know, is by how much you utilize the tool that God has given to you. Amen. You know, so if you check the track records of generals who have walked the earth, they were men that were fearless. They were men that were taken over by the Holy Ghost. Peter, by the Spirit of God, in Acts chapter 3, met the lame man at the beautiful gates. That guy has been there for, you know, 40 years. You know, if you go to verse 4 or so, you know, when they were arrested, you know, that he healed the man. The Bible says that the man whom the miracle was done on was about 40 years old. So he has been lame for his mother's home, you know, and he has been at the gate for 40 years. But when the Holy Spirit came upon Peter on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, you know, Peter and John went to the temple at the hour of prayer. You know, and the Bible says that, you know, Peter said to the man, fasten your eyes on us. Because the man was expecting, you know, to receive something from them. And he did, he got what he was expecting. He had an expectation. Even though it was monetary value, but he had an expectation. And then Peter said, look on us. Oh. When you read, you know, Acts of the Apostles, you are inspired to do so much for God. The book of Acts is still being written today. The Holy Ghost is still using men to do mighty works. Let's not be left behind. Amen. And it says, silver and gold have I not, for such as I have, give I unto thee. You have something, and that is power. It says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And that says, immediately, immediately, not three days later, immediately, you know, the guy's legs receive strength. 
and he went into the temple leaping and praising God. And the Bible says, everybody, when they saw him, they knew it was the man that sat at the beautiful gate. And people gathered. That is why I see power will draw people. But when they come, the final place of that power is to preach Christ to them. So when the people gathered, Peter now saw it as an occasion to preach Christ to the people. And the Bible says, those that believe were also in thousands by the miracle of one man at the beautiful gate. Thousands of people, you know, were added to the church. So there's power on your inside. There are gifts of the spirit on your inside. Begin to activate them. Begin to lay hands on the sick. If you find somebody sick, don't tell the person, come, let me lay hands on you. You find somebody, you know, that is, you know, blind or something. Believe that there is power in your inside. Lay hands on the person, and that miracle will take place. Don't be scared. Sometimes, sometimes there is fear. What if I do and it don't work? It will work. It is God that confirms His word. Since so Bible says God working with them, confirming the word with signs and wonders following. Signs will start following us after now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So let's not just sit down. There are nations waiting for us to come and take over those cities. Amen. Amen. And you know, the beautiful thing about this move that God wants to do, or God is doing, is that you know it's coming from a continent where you know people have you know, the person of Africa, you know, people know that there is Africa, and you know, that is the divine agenda of God. And you know, so there are two dimensions through which God, you know, will achieve this. Number one is power, and number two is prosperity. There's so much prosperity coming into the church in these last days. So much prosperity and so much power will be available for the church in these last days. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Let's see. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Let's see what God is saying. Zechariah chapter 1. I'm just declaring you know, what God said to us you know, in this season. Please let's follow closely. This is cry, yet say, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem. My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. So the cities of God in this season will be spread abroad. And the channel, you know, one of the channels through which God will actualize that, you know, is a channel of prosperity. So the you know the, the the reason or the purpose of this prosperity is actually for the expansion of God's kingdom. Because you know there are churches to plan. You know, there are you know eight materials to take to you know these cities that have not seen the light. There are so many cities in darkness. You don't just go and see power. When you fall under power and come and they start up, they will eat food now. I mean, hey, hey. When the gospel came to us in Africa, it didn't come empty handed. It came, you know, with you know, so much relief material. So that is, you know, the reason why God will be putting money in our hands in this season. So much money, so much love to be transferred, you know, to the church for this assignment. God's cities be spread abroad. God's cities be spread abroad. Missionaries will rise from this house. Amen. Missionaries go to Africa, to Asia, you know, to Europe, to countries in the world will rise from this house in the name of Jesus. So all we need to do, you know, is avail ourselves. So there is power in this moment. We have seen that we shall receive power and be witnesses unto Jesus. And there is also prosperity. You know, even in Joel that we read, if you read the preceding verses, it talks about, you know, prosperity also. The church is not supposed to be you know, a poor church. In Acts chapter 6, you know, even the early church, they had money, plenty of money. The Bible says that they were ministering to the widows every day, daily ministration. 
That's so much money to be ministering, you know, to widows every day, every day. You know, so God will be putting money in our hands. So as you catch a vision, please write it down and trust that the Holy Spirit will expand, you know, that vision. You know, people will be going to different sectors. Please don't hold the money. It's not for you. It's for God's kingdom. Amen. It's for God's kingdom. That is, my city is still prosperity. And then, you know, the dangerous part of that is that when you hold the money, God will cause that supply. Wow. That's, that's just the truth. Yes. This, this, this last bit, God is not looking for people that will come and show themselves. No. God is looking for people that will actually have his kingdom at heart. That's why he says, seek first the kingdom of God. Everything about you in this season must be the kingdom first. Yes. Must be the kingdom first. So when you know when the resources are coming in, please, the kingdom of God should be first. Amen. Amen. The kingdom of God should be first. Hallelujah. You know, so those are the few things that God will be doing you know, in this season and from this house. Amen. From this house. Amen. All I'm saying is, you know, <laughs> I'm not just saying things I just heard. You know, these are things that the Holy Spirit you know, laid in our hearts you know, to share. So I'm just giving you know, a background perspective in you know, what God will be doing in this season. Amen. Amen. Finally, you know, the third thing that God wants to do is that God wants to release the mantles of the fathers upon the children. Somebody says and says, Fathers rest when sons rise. Mm. Fathers rest when sons rise. And the truth is, it is the young people that will do these things. Eh? There are places where we can enter that the fathers cannot enter. Young people, this one is for us now. This one is direct to the young people now. When they say let's go on missions to China, Daddy will be at home praying for us. Amen. Mommy will be there to pray for us. We are the ones that will go to China and take over China for Jesus. Amen. Because yeah. the ones that can run now. Was there a persecution? You will run too now. Eh? Yes. As you are persecuting, you are running. You are running your Bible and you are preaching Jesus as you are running. Is that also? Yes. Yeah, that is why strength is given to young men. Because you can run. Eh? You can just call it whether we are going to uh, Afghanistan or somewhere. We are going to plant church there. Is it, uh, is it our dad you want to say that go and, no, it's, it's James, it's James in it. I mean, it's the ones that, you know, but the ones that we stay in the bush three days and preaching Jesus to death. It's not people, it's not old people. Amen. So God is releasing the mouths of the fathers. Please, this is a very, you know, critical um, part of this school. The fathers will soon get to the end of their journey. And it is time for us to wake up and collect the battle. Yeah. The kingdom of God is not a rainy race. It is actually a sprint. Chase sprint, they call it that way. That one, like four by four, and you pass to the next person. No, okay, 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 that is sprint. Okay, thank you for helping me. Amen. And so, we need to start waking up and getting closer or close to the fathers. We have the vision, we have the strength, but we have the wisdom and the experience. There is something that encountered about God that we have not encountered. And they need to actually transfer that dimension of God to the young people. It is a very serious issue because, let me say it as it is, if the fathers go, without dropping what they have or without you know finding anybody available to release that one to one our generation will just be like that though i'll show us the scripture before we close there is actually you know so much that god has invested in our fathers that we need to in all humility sit on that name and learn we can have change our own problem it's not with some people but see that wisdom, see that experience, see that thing that they have touched in God, we need it. Let's look at Second Kings. Second Kings. That is why even the Joshua, God said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. 
as I was with Moses. In the same capacity I was with Moses, it's the same capacity I will be with you. And Joshua was a servant of Moses. Joshua was a servant or the servant of Moses. So Joshua sat under Moses and learned so many things. You know, the Bible says that you know when Moses would leave, you know, to go and talk with the people after talking with God, the Bible says Joshua will stay. Joshua will stay in the presence of God. Joshua doesn't leave the presence of God. Joshua actually stayed behind and he learned all about God that Moses was showing him. Amen. 7 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. This is the last thing that they will run up. It says, And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a railway that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. So Elisha was a servant of who? Elijah. And Elijah was to be taken away, and another person did not follow him. It was Elisha that followed him. Amen. He says, And Elisha said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. So God was going to take Elijah, you know, to heaven. And Elisha, his servant, you know, followed him through. Amen. Go to verse 8, please. Very quickly, verse 8. It says, And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they, they too went over on dry ground. Verse 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Let what a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. We need a double portion of the anointing that is upon the fathers to rest upon us. We need it. Because if you look at, you know, after the encounter, you know, Elisha became a mighty man. Yeah. The reason of the double portion of the anointing that was on Elijah that came upon him. Elisha became, Elisha did so many mighty things. How can one man cause 42 children and two sheep bears came out and devour all of them? Wow. So many mighty works. And then, you know, so many things that Elisha did, you know, and then there was something that caught my attention when I was studying it. There was a young man that Elisha had as a servant, and that man was called Gehazi. Now, we have studied that before in chapter 5, you know, the case of Naaman when he came to heal him, you know, and the prophet of God cursed Gehazi, and then he became leprous. And those of us, you know, when we read, you say, oh, that was the end. No, that was not the end. The end was that he lost the anointing that was upon Elisha that had been transferred to him. That was, that was actually what he lost. The leprosy came out from the man of God's hand. Do you understand what I'm saying? The man of God cursed him because he knew that this thing was not supposed to end with me. I was actually supposed to transfer it to him. Because of that, we don't read it in the you know, chapter, same chapter, King chapter, that it was 20 and 21. The you know, Bible says that Elisha was sick and then he died. Elisha was sick and he died and they buried him. Then he said, you know, a young man also died and they came and buried him in the sepulchre of Elisha. The Bible says, as the man that was there touched the bones of Elisha, he came back to life. Ha! What kind of anointing is that? Even the bones of the man of God still carry power, still carry the anointing. That was what that the resting of the hands. That was what that the resting of the hands. If he did not follow greed, because it was greed that caused him. He went back down the man. He said, My master said, I should collect this one, collect this one. Did I send you that one? 
He now sent him down and he went on his own. I mean, so young people, let's not allow what is happening in this our generation to take our attention away from the things of God. There's so much going on right now about the quest of making money. There's so much going on about the quest of making money in this our generation. So many rituals, and so many crazy things that you know, young people do just because they want to drive bands. Ah, they just want to drive bands, or you want to, you want to be long, you want to be on those streets, you want to. Hello. That's not the plan of God for us. Amen. So we need, as we are rising, you know, into our prophetic destinies, you know, as we are operating the gifts of the Spirit, working in power, let's be humble and sit under the fathers because God would be releasing mantles on us in this season. Amen. So please, you know, let's you know, take these things to heart and you know, trust that God will actually bring to pass you know, all of these things. It doesn't matter. Twelve people went out to spy the land. Only two people came back with positive results. And those were the two people that entered into the promised land. Amen. So, you just have to believe what God is saying. If you don't believe, you'll stay on the other side. Those of us who believe, we will go in and possess the land. Amen. Yeah. Have you been blessed this morning? Come on, jump your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are here this morning and you know you have not consciously asked Jesus to come into your life. Please, I encourage you to do so. Jesus is coming again. The day of the Lord is at hand. Jesus is coming again. You are online, you, know, you are in the house this morning. You have not given your life to Jesus consciously. Please don't be shy. Please, all heads bowed, you know, and all eyes closed. If you have not given your life to Jesus this morning, please stand on your feet. Jesus is here to save you. Jesus is here to give you a new beginning. You know, you may have been involved in you know, so many evil, and you think that God, you know, cannot save you. The blood of Jesus is available to wipe you know, away your sin this morning. Please stand on your feet if you are here this morning. You have not consciously said, Jesus, come into my heart. Amen. For those who are watching online, Please say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. I confess my sins before you this morning. I ask that you wash me with your blood. Forgive me all my sins and write my name in your book of life. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you are the Christ. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are here this morning and you have been coming to church and you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of praying in tongues. Please stand to your feet. You know you don't pray in tongues. You don't, you don't pray with other language. You don't, you don't pray in tongues. The Bible says the Spirit came upon them, you filled them, you know, and they began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them contrast, you know you are here. You don't, you know, you don't pray in tongues. You don't speak with other tongues. Please rise to your feet this morning. Let us pray with you. Don't be shy. You know, the gift of praying in tongues is a powerful tool. It's a very powerful tool. You know, we use it to build ourselves and our most holy faith. Like Jude, we say, pray in the Holy Ghost. Paul says, he that prays and will not talk and he fights himself. You don't pray in tongues. Please, the gift of tongues you know, is for every believer. It's not for a selected few. You're here this morning, and when you don't pray in tongues, please rise to your feet. All right, we all pray in tongues. Amen. Finally, if you know you're here, you're sick in your body, you have a pain, you have you know, a medical condition, you know, whether you have, um, you know, some people say they have ulcer, you know, and all of those, you know, sicknesses. If you have, you know, any of those you know, medical conditions, please rise to your feet this morning, even as we pray with you. Please do not be shy. 
If you know you haven't paid anywhere, you know you have the medical condition, you know, some who say they are smart sick, you know, whatever it is, you need, you know, a new organ in your system, you need, you know, a change of heart, whatever it is. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit will give you the praise this morning. Just lift up your hands to Jesus, those of you standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for these ones that are standing here. Your word says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are made whole. And so, Father, we stand in agreement with them this morning, and we cause every root of sickness this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, from the crown of their head to the sole and the tip of their toes, let your healing power flow right now in the name of Jesus. Whether it is a pain, we cause that pain to die in the name of Jesus. Whether it is a sickness or whatever, whatever name it is called, we cause it to die this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, these words will return again with testimonies of your healing power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, just touch them this morning from the crown of their head to the sole and the tip of their toes. I speak life into your body this morning in the name of Jesus. Receive strength. That sickness is gone and gone forever in the name of Jesus. No more shall that sickness return again in the name of Jesus. Every pain you are feeling, receive strength right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. And you can check. And for those of you who need to go to the hospital, please just go. And then the doctors to check, and we are waiting for testimonies in Jesus' name. Church, let's put our hands together for 